What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new to hunting or if you're new to hunting in California or if you're a seasoned hunter and you just want to know more about tags and applications and the whole process in California, this is the video for you. So the focus of this video is going to be on deer hunting because deer hunting is the most popular big game animal in the state. So there are elk opportunities and bear and pigs, um, coyotes, but deer are by far the most popular big game animal in the state. And there's a pretty simple explanation of that. Uh, deer are the most populous big game animal in the state. And they far outnumber elk, bears, pigs even. So it provides a lot more opportunities for hunters. Before we get started, I wanna put a disclaimer out there. It is absolutely mandatory that you do your own research when it comes to the laws and regulations around hunting. So videos like this, Facebook forums, groups, talking to guys who have experience in the field. Those are all great resources, but at the end of the day, you're responsible for knowing the laws, changes to laws, so it's absolutely crucial that you do your own research. Now, speaking of that, every year the Department of Fish and Wildlife puts out the Hunter's Guidebook or Hunter's Manual, um, and it talks about statistics, it talks about hunting zones, changes in laws. I highly recommend you go, if you're new to hunting, that's a good place to start. Uh, you wanna go review laws and take a look at the different zones and the regulations. So you definitely need to do your own homework. I'll provide a link to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife website and their archive of all the, the manuals. The 2022 one hasn't come out yet, uh, but you can take a look at 2021 and then for the last several years, uh, the PDF versions are online. So the link to that will be below. So let's get into the video. Now every state is a little bit different, so it's really important to know how California breaks it down. So for example, in Arkansas, I have family in Arkansas, I've hunted there a few times. You buy one document and it's your hunting license and included with that license are multiple deer tags, um, turkey tags, and I believe a bear tag, it's all included. So you make one purchase and you get all the tags included. So it's, it's one document. In California, you buy a hunting license, and this allows you to purchase tags for the big game animal you want to hunt, or in some cases like coyotes, it allows you to hunt coyotes. So before you do anything, you have to buy your hunting license. This makes you a legal hunter, and you have to purchase a hunting license every year. You only need to purchase one, so you don't have to purchase one for each species. Uh, in other states, a hunting license is what you purchase to hunt that animal. Well, in California, you just purchase a license to hunt. Think of it like that. Once you've purchased your hunting license, then you can go purchase the tag for the animal you want to hunt. So your license, when you get your license, it's not valid until you sign it. And we've, I've had game wardens check my hunting license to make sure it's signed. So it has to be signed for it to be valid. So before you get into the tag uh, purchasing process, assuming you've already purchased your hunting license like we talked about, it's important to understand what a hunting zone is. So in some states you'll see what are called hunting units or wildlife management areas or game management areas or game management units. You see a lot of different terminology surrounding what is basically a specific geographical area and you buy a tag or in other states a license to hunt that specific unit or area or zone really it's just a geographical area that you're allowed to hunt in california those hunting areas are called zones so there are 44 deer hunting zones in the state of california a zone is by far the largest and then you have your b zones c zones d zones and x zones so let's take a look at the map right here and i'll kind of break it down a little bit further for you now these are laid out in a pretty specific way. Your X zones are your premium zones. So every single X zone is a drawing only zone. And I'll talk about drawing only zones a little bit later. So primarily your mule deer populations in the state are in X zones. You can find some mule deer in C zones and D zones, but your opportunities at a trophy animal or trophy by state classifications, uh, you're gonna find those in your X zones. 
So now that we've taken a look at the overall map of California and all of its zones, we need to break it down a little more and talk about over-the-counter versus a drawing tag versus a premium tag. So there's three different tag designations in the state. So let's talk about over-the-counter. So there is a little bit of a misconception when it comes to over-the-counter. In some states, over-the-counter means you can buy it over-the-counter, literally like it says, and it's unlimited. In California, we have a tag quota. And what that means is each zone that can be purchased over the counter, meaning you don't have to apply and be drawn like in a lottery system for that tag, every tag that's sold over the counter like that, there's a tag quota, meaning there's an overall number of tags that once that number is reached, no more tags are sold for that zone. So let's use A zone for example. Every year, and this is a good place to stop and remind you that these tag quotas can change and they do change depending on population numbers, hunter activity and so forth. So that's why it's important to double check your manual every year. In A zone, there are 65,000 tags sold. Now tags go on sale every year on April 15th, so you can go purchase your deer tags. Once that 65,000 tag allotment is sold, they're gone, that's it. In B zones, I believe there are 30 something thousand tags sold, the same with D three through five, which is one tag, even though it's three units, it's one tag that you buy. It's 30, 33 or 35,000, somewhere around there. So those are tag quotas. Now the reason that's important is for two reasons. Number one, if you have a specific zone you wanna hunt that's an over the counter, uh, it's in your best interest to purchase that tag as soon as possible. Because once that quota is reached, then you're no longer able to purchase that tag and most zones in California eventually sell out. Sometimes they'll sell out during the season, so once the season's already started, um, or sometimes they'll sell out a month or two or three in advance. So that brings up the discussion of a premium tag. So now let's talk about what a premium tag is. So not to be confused with a drawing only tag, a premium tag is actually an over-the-counter tag that the previous year was all the tag quota was reached to break that down a little further let's just use our a zone for an example if in 2021 the tag quota for a zone was reached on june 30th then this year 2022 this license year that tag becomes a premium tag and you have to apply for that tag in the drawing system so and you're only allowed one premium tag per year a little side note, California allows hunters to purchase two deer tags, but you can only have one premium tag or one drawing tag. So that's the difference between a premium and an over-the-counter. Now a drawing only tag is just like it says, it's always a drawing only tag. And hunters have to use the lottery and preference point system to get that tag. So let's talk about the preference point system in California. When you're filling out your tag application for your drawing only tags, or you go to purchase your tags, you have three choices you can, you can designate on that application process. So the first choice that you provide is what decides your preference points. Whether you receive one, whether you use the preference points you have stored, or whether you're, you receive one if you don't get drawn. So for example, let's break this down. If you decide you wanna hunt X1, which is always a drawing only zone, you're gonna put that as your first choice on your first deer tag application. Then, if you don't get drawn for X1, then you will receive a preference point. Even if your second choice was also a drawing, you actually get drawn for that tag, you will not burn your preference points if you get drawn for that second choice. So that's why it's so important to make sure you put your first choice always first. So that's a perfect segue into strategy. When you're in the process of building up points and you're trying to decide how to use your points, uh, when to hunt over the counter, and you're trying to create like a plan for your hunts, that's where that first choice in your application comes in really handy. So going back to our X1 example, let's just say that you um, are interested in hunting the C zones. So C zones are a, a drawing only tag like we talked about. You have a much higher statistical chance of drawing a C zone tag, a general tag, than you do an X1 tag. So what you would do is you would put X1 as your first choice and you would put the C one through four or the C general tag 
as your second choice. If you don't get drawn for X1 and you do get drawn for C zones, you still get a preference point. So the preference point system is based on the first choice only. So it allows hunters to actually get drawn for other hunts uh, while still gaining their preference points and growing their preference point pool. So it's a pretty cool way to go about it. So definitely use all three choices when you go to apply for your tags. Now, if you've researched over-the-counter spots and you have some over-the-counter hunts that you wanna do, while at the same time applying for your premium hunts and building up your preference points, what you wanna do is you put your premium hunt first. So yeah, you probably have, especially if you're starting out, you're gonna have a really low statistical chance of drawing that tag, um, but that's okay. So if you don't get drawn, then you're gonna gain that preference point and then in your choice number two, you can put something where you have a better statistical chance, like we talked about the C-zone, or maybe an archery hunt, something like that. And on your third choice, you put your over-the-counter tag. So let's just lay it out again. If you wanted to hunt X-zone, that's like your, your target zone that you wanna hunt, your premium hunt. Um, you've scoped it out, you've scouted it, you've seen there's big bucks in the area, that's your dream hunt. So you're gonna put X-1 as your first choice, then you can put that C zone as your second choice, which you have a much higher statistical chance of drawing it, even with no points. And then your third choice, let's just say you have some spots in A zone that you wanna hunt. Well, since A zone is an over-the-counter tag, you're gonna get that. If you don't get drawn for X1 or your C zone general tag, you will get that A tag. So you would still get your preference point while still getting to hunt. So it's a pretty cool system. And in California, you're allowed two deer tags. So the first tag is what you're gonna use to apply for your drawing, uh, for your premium hunts or your drawing only hunts. Your second tag is an over-the-counter tag. So you can use this for an archery only or your A zone, B zone, D zones. So you have a lot of options you can use for that second tag. But this allows hunters to go harvest two deer, which is pretty unique. In a lot of Western states, you're only allowed one tag. So it's a pretty cool opportunity uh, to get out and harvest two animals. Now let's break down the preference point drawing system a little bit further. For most drawing only hunts, a certain percentage of those tags, the majority of those tags, are provided in the preference point system drawing. So most of those tags are gonna go to people with the highest preference points. There is a small number of tags for each drawing only hunt that are given on a random draw system. So for example, if there are 100 tags, there's a handful of tags that are given on a random draw. So even though you have maybe no points, you still have, even though it's really small, you have a chance of still drawing an amazing tag. So definitely still apply. Now the preference point system is pretty straightforward. The more points you have, the more likely your chances of drawing a premium tag. Now, California is really impacted. So most hunts, especially your rifle hunts in drawing only zones, are extremely impacted. And oftentimes you're gonna wait a decade or more building points to be able to hunt that zone. But the flip side of that coin, the positive, is that there are a lot of over-the-counter opportunities that you can take advantage of while you're building your points and waiting for that hunt of a lifetime in California. Uh, this is especially true with elk hunting because we don't have a huge elk population so hunting opportunities are really limited. In fact, several of the elk hunts in California, they're given anywhere from one to five to ten tags. There's just not that many given. If you look at statistics, at, at drawing odds, you have pretty much less than one percent of drawing a lot of those tags until you get to 20 plus points. So you're going to wait a couple decades before you get a really solid shot at drawing that tag. However, like I said, tags are still allotted on a random draw system every year. So yeah, it's playing the lottery, that's what it is, it's a lottery system, but you still have a small statistical chance. And every year you don't get drawn is a year that you're building points. Now let's talk about the, the deer hunts. So we talked about the deer zones, the hunting zones. It's important to break down the hunts within those zones or the hunts uh, in specific areas like within a zone. So here's what I mean by that. In addition to the lettered zones, so A, B, C, D, and X zones, you're gonna see hunt numbers. So you're gonna see A zone and you're gonna see A hunts and those are very different. So what are those hunts? A hunts are archery hunts. 
So an AO tag is an archery only tag, which is an over the counter tag, but your A numbered tag, so A1, A2, A3, and so forth, those are specific archery drawing only hunts. So if you apply for that tag and you get drawn, you're allowed to hunt the archery season in that premium zone. Now there are less archery hunters than there are rifle hunters, uh, which is pretty standard across the board. So you have a higher statistical chance of drawing an A hunt than you do a general season hunt. So every X zone and the C zones, um, they have an archery specific hunt. So if you want to hunt archery, you have to apply for that A tag that corresponds to that zone. Um, for example, the C zones, that's the A1 tag. And then when you get further down that list of numbers, so for example, A21, A22, A23, those are specific hunts in specific areas. Like the A30 tag is the Kovalo buck hunt that falls within the B zones. It's a late season hunt, it's a specialty hunt, it's during the rut. Um, and so it's a, it's a premium tag and it's within a defined geographical area that falls within a zone. So you don't get to hunt the whole zone. It's a pretty specific region. So when you start getting deeper into your, the hunts that you want to apply for, it's important that you understand the geographical boundaries of the hunt that you're going for. So the way it's broken down is A1 through 20 are zone specific archery tags. Like I said, A1 is your C1 through 4 that you can hunt. A2, A3, A4, those are zone specific. But once you get down that list beyond A20, then it's area specific tags that have a specific geographical area that's not defined by the zone within which that area is, if that makes sense. So the next category of drawing only tags are the G tags. Now G is for general, so these are general season or general methods tags. And a lot of these, just like in those archery ones we talked about, they have specific hunting areas that may be a lot smaller than an entire zone. It's just a small region that you're allowed to hunt. There are some caveats to that, like the G1 hunt is zone C4, but late season, so you get to hunt the C4 zone. Um, late season during the rut, it's a pretty cool tag. But a lot of those hunts, like I said, break down into small geographical areas that you're allowed to hunt with general methods. The next category are apprentice tags, or J for junior. So they're designated J and then a number. Now these, just like it sounds, they're for juniors, uh, for kids, and it's really cool opportunities. If you have kids that you're trying to take hunting, uh, it's great to start young, get them out in the field, and these are great opportunities that they can get out and get a premium hunt. There's some, there's some doe tags available, um, which we don't have a lot of those in California, so take advantage of them, juniors. Finally, you'll see M tags. Now an M tag is a muzzle loader. So these are pretty self-explanatory. The, the letter kind of tells you what kind of hunt it is. Um, your M or muzzle loader tags, again, are followed by a number and they're pretty specific in their geographical boundaries. Now, on the, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife website, you can click on any one of these hunts and it'll take you to a PDF and it'll show you a map with the exact boundaries of the hunting area. Um, so you definitely wanna research where you're gonna hunt, when the season is, and the specific geographical region. So the last thing I wanna talk about with all these hunts and zones are season dates. Now this is really, really important because it's easy to get in trouble with this because there are different season dates and sometimes they don't seem to make sense. So every hunting zone has a specific season that you can hunt. With your over-the-counter hunts, when you buy a tag, so let's go back to using A zone for example. When you buy an A zone tag, you're allowed to hunt the archery season and the general method season. But it's important that you pay attention to the season dates. So the reason I chose A zone for example is because A zone is the earliest deer season to open in California. It opens around mid July. So it's brutal hot in most parts of the zone, but that's beside the point. And hunters can hunt with archery equipment until early August or so. And then in mid August to mid September is the general method season. So you can hunt with a rifle or a bow if you choose. Most of the over the counter hunts, however, start in mid August or so, usually the third Saturday in August with your archery season. And then the third Saturday in September for rifle season. It's really important 
to pay attention to your dates. Another good example is are the B zones. So when you buy a B zone tag, it allows you to hunt all six of the B zones, so a huge geographical area, but there's one variance in the season dates and that's zone B4. Zone B4 uh, pretty much aligns with the A zone in terms of the season dates. So it starts earlier and it ends earlier. So you don't wanna get caught in B zone after the general season's closed and you're out hunting with your rifle. So you have to pay attention to the season dates. Um, and the same thing with your A tags, J tags, M tags, they have a specific date range that you can hunt just like any other hunting area across the country. Uh, in California, it's not across the board. So in some states, your deer hunting season, it's, it's statewide and it's a specific date range for the entire state. Um, like Arkansas, we talked about Arkansas earlier. It opens in, I believe it's September and runs into February. So it's crazy long, but, but it's across the whole state. Those are the open dates. Um, your archery season opens in September and then you have your rifle season in November. But in California, it's different. It's, it's specific to the hunt and specific to the zone. So make sure you're paying attention to the season dates when, when you're planning your hunts uh, and when you're actually out in the field hunting. And one more thing about season dates, if you have an over-the-counter tag, make sure that you don't hunt in that time gap between archery season and general season. Usually it's about a week. So if you're out in the field hunting and you're in that you know, six, seven day span between the close of archery and your general season open, you're gonna get in trouble. So pay attention to those uh, open and closing dates and that gap be between your archery and general season. So the last thing I wanna to talk to you about before we end this video is your tag. So if you harvest a deer, by law, when you get to that animal, you have to immediately fill out that tag and attach it to the animal's antlers. And then once you get out of your hunting area, you've packed out the animal or you put it in the truck or whatever, as soon as possible, so you have to take your tag to an authority to have that validated. Now, there are a lot of resources in terms of authorities that you can take it to. You can take it to a law enforcement officer, of course, a game warden, postal employees are on there. <laughs> so anybody working for fire, the fire department. Uh, so there's a lot of options that you can take your deer tag to, to get it validated. There's a lot of authorities listed. I like to keep a zip tie in my pack. So uh, I can punch the zip tie through the top of the tag and then just zip it around the, the antlers and I'm good to go. So I know it's secure. I know it's not gonna fall off. So once that tag is signed off by an authority, they review the information, they take a look at the animal, the antlers, then you still have to fill out a harvest report. A harvest report has to be filled out every year whether you harvest an animal or not. And if you don't do it by a certain date, I believe it's in January, then the next time you go to purchase a tag, there's a fine that's attached to the cost of the tag. I believe it's 20 something dollars. So it's really important to remember to, first of all, fill out your tag because that's a requirement by law. But second of all, make sure you fill out your harvest report or it's gonna cost you money the next season when you go to buy your tags. I wanna break down a couple of laws for you that are really important and they're kinda of unique to California. And so I wanna throw these in here as a little caveat because um, I don't want you to get sighted in the field. I'm sure you don't either. And I promise if you run into a game warden, they're gonna check for this stuff. So like we mentioned earlier in the video, your, your hunting license has to be signed. So if you don't sign that license, it's not considered valid. So you are therefore a hunter in the field who's not licensed to hunt. That's how it's looked at by law enforcement. The second thing is if you're archery hunting. So if you're hunting with archery equipment during archery season, you're not allowed to carry a firearm. And I promise you, Gabe Warrens will check for this. We've been checked for this several times. You're not allowed to carry a firearm. Does that present some risk? Yes, it does. It does. So if you shoot a bear, or if there's a mountain lion that confronts you, you're only gonna have your archery equipment, but that is the law in California. So definitely leave your firearms at home when you're archery hunting, because you're gonna get checked for it eventually. And it is against the law to carry firearms during archery season. Now one last law I wanna leave you with is regarding antlers on a buck. In California, there's very few doe hunting opportunities, so I'm not gonna talk about does, but for bucks, the law is the deer has to be a forked horn. 
at least on one side for it to be legal. And the general kind of rule of thumb is that if you can hang a ring off the fork, it's legal. But the legal terminology is a little more clear than that. Um, the fork has to be in the upper third of the antler, so an eye guard does not count. And yes, that does happen. I've seen a buck that I believe had a genetic deficiency uh, that had spikes that were a good 12 inches tall um, with eye guards and everything, but no forks. So that eye guard in the lower third of the antler does not count as a fork. So the law defines a fork as a branch antler in the upper third of the antler. So my advice to you is don't leave any room for doubt. So if you see a buck that has the tiniest of forks at the top, just leave it alone. It'll, it's in your best interest. I'm not one of those guys that says you have to shoot the biggest buck out there and um, I'm not anti-forked horned bucks or, you know, go harvest your game. You work for it, you're hunting it. However, make sure that you leave no room for error when it comes to that fork because that it has to be a forked horned buck at least on one side for it to be legal. So when you're looking at your antlers, if you can't tell if it's a fork, just leave it alone because again, that deer has to be validated, it has to be seen by an authority in order for your tag to be validated. So if you're not sure if it's a fork torn, it's not, move on. So thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope this was helpful. We appreciate your support. We appreciate you watching the channel. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and give us a like, leave us a comment. We love to hear from you. We have a lot of exciting content coming this year and we will see you on the next one.